Anthropic recently released updates to Claude AI. The headline feature, computer control or computer use, which allows the AI model to take control of your desktop environment, mimicking human behavior like moving the mouse, clicking buttons and typing text. So let's see how well Claude's AI performs tasks like browsing the internet, filling in forms, and most importantly, performing tasks on your behalf. Hi there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. Now, Claude just rolled out their computer use model, an AI model that takes control of your laptop or desktop environment to perform tasks on your behalf. So in this video, we're going to show you how to set it up, look at how well it performs, and consider some use cases where this could be handy. But this model is just in beta, so let's be patient with the mistakes we find. You can find all the documentation I'll be covering in this video in the description below. So let's dive in. Now the documentation explains that Anthropic has created tools within the model that act in a manner similar to a human. Think navigating screens, clicking and typing, which is the first readily available AI model that acts as a true virtual assistant, which could be a major asset for businesses. But how well does it perform? And what can we expect in the future? Firstly, because this is in beta, we need to be cautious. And the recommendation is to run this model on a desktop container. As we can see here, Anthropic are giving us the warning. Basically, we need a virtual dummy version of your computer or laptop. We want to ensure that AI doesn't turn on us and share our privacy information or delete important files. So we want to use a containerized version. What I'm gonna be using is Docker, which is a free desktop application, and I suggest you use this to create a container. Basically a sandbox system in my desktop operating system, but you can use other platforms. So head to the Docker website if you do choose to use Docker and download the correct version for your operating system. For me, that's Apple Silicone. Once you have completed the download, create an account and you should see this dashboard. Next, we can jump into the second step, which will be collecting an API key from Anthropic and making sure your account is set up. If you're new to using API keys, an API key is something that connects the Claude model to our operating system or to our computer. You'll need to navigate to console.anthropic.com and create a new account if you haven't already. Now you should see this dashboard if you've successfully created an account or logged in. In order for Claude computer use to work, you'll want to set up a billing account by navigating to settings in the top navigation, then billing and follow the steps to complete the billing setup if you haven't. I have $10 on my account, Rich, but Let's continue. This is just for the example. You can select API keys from the left side panel here or just head back to the dashboard and then just select get API keys. You'll then need to create a key, which we will call Claude Computer Use and set your workspace. I'll just select default and add. Here we have the API key. Now make sure you don't share this with anyone and I'll be deleting this directly after recording. Don't close this page because we will want to copy our API key in just a moment. But first, we're ready for step number three. For those of you using Windows, you want to open the custom prompt app. And us Mac users, we are going to open the terminal app. These applications allow us to make custom prompts in our operating system. Now, make sure Docker is still open. I can see in the icon up here that it is, so I know. And head back to the Claw documentation. We we'll want to access the computer use reference implementation, which will take us to GitHub. I'll leave a direct link to this below. Now, don't be intimidated by this. You don't need to understand code or everything on the page. The step we're taking is a simple one, basic copy and paste. Navigate to the readme file here, which is the Anthropic computer use demo. Again, Anthropic is stating the risk of using this model directly on your desktop environment. So please use a containerized version to test it. You've been warned. Now, Anthropic have made this step for us oh so easy. If we scroll down, we see the Docker container code. So copy this, then open your terminal app or custom prompt app and just paste it. We can see on the second line, the API key reference here. So you guessed it. 
Go back into Anthropic, copy your API key, then come back and just simply replace the placeholder. Now run this code just by heading to the end of it and enter. Now this can take some time, but be patient. Basically, this is the last step we need to do before we can access computer use. Super easy, I told you. Okay, I'm successfully connected. Hopefully you are too. It should say computer use demo is ready. Open and this local host URL we see here. So we're going to copy this and paste it directly into a new tab in our web browser. And again, this might take some time to load, so be patient. And we're here ready to play. So we've actually already set up the computer use model and we're ready to jump in. So let's attempt some simple prompts to see how well Claude performs. Let's firstly just ask to find a picture of my local beach, Naihan, Phuket, Thailand on Google Images and download that image. So we'll see in the left-hand bar, what we really first want to do is ensure that we have the API connected and the model's correct. Yep, we can see that set up correctly. Just double check that on your side. Okay, so let's prompt this and let's see how well it performs this task. We can see that it started running because we can notice that up there. Whoop, that just made a noise. And slowly going through. So it's gonna be using Firefox as the browser. And I could go on my phone, I could make a coffee as we watch it action there. So it is slowly going through the steps, but as we can see, it's in Firefox. It searched my beach, Nihan. Let's see how it goes at actually downloading an image though. I'm not sure if it is aware. Oh, it's gonna try and just save the image there. Let's see how we go. See, we might actually have to change the prompt up. Oh. How we go. The prompt that I gave it wasn't too specific. I could definitely have helped out. Now let's click the save button and it has downloaded. Obviously not to my desktop environment, but to the virtual environment, which is pretty cool that it did that. It took a little bit of time, but as we said, this is in beta. And I think they were still running. All right, we've got this little message, perfect. I've successfully downloaded an image of Naihan Beach in Phuket, Thailand. The image is saved as in the downloads. The image shows a beautiful curved bay with crystal clear turquoise waters surrounded by green hills and trees. Is there anything else you'd like to know about the image or Naihan Beach? So I'm pretty happy with that. That was a really simple prompt. What else can we get it to do? What about filling in a form? Let's create a form and then test and see what are the responses it gives. Okay, so I quickly created a flower order form. Just a simple example. Don't ask me why I went for that. And I'm just gonna share it with Claude AI now. Um, please complete this form. Let's just keep these prompts simple to try and find some limitations. So I've sent the prompt, please complete this form with the link. The agent's now running. So let's have a look at how it actually performs. I apologize, but I cannot and should not assist with filling out forms or submitting information through external online forms. This is an important limitation that helps protect privacy and security. Now, I thought we might run into a roadblock there with capture or recapture enabled on that form. So it's good to know that it does understand security and privacy issues. Now, what about another use case? I am heading to Tasmania, Australia for a hiking trip with some friends soon, and I need to book my flight. So let's see. I am heading to Tasmania, Australia, specifically Launceston. Maybe if we spell Australia right. Australia, Launceston. Um, I will be departing on the 25th of November and returning on the 3rd of December. Please find flights for me. Let's see how it goes at completing this prompt. 
Now it's running and looking at the prompt, so we'll see how it actually goes directly from here. Tool, so as I previously mentioned earlier, there are tools built within the actual Firefox is already running but is not responding. To use Firefox, you must close the existing. Okay, we can't have two running at once. So once we've completed a prompt, we need to jump in and close it, but, but it doesn't actually allow me to do that, of course, because this operating system is controlled by Claude. But it has come back to me. So we'll see if it will fix this issue after I respond to its response. Now I'll search for flights. First, I need to know where you'll be departing from. Of course, I didn't actually... You're departing City Airport, Phuket, Thailand. Whether you prefer any specific times, no. Your preferred flight class, doesn't matter. And no other preferences. So we'll see if this error comes up again. It's taking a look at my response. And let's see what we get back. So it's jumping into Google. As we can see, it's starting to search now. So it's not experiencing that earlier issue. I'm not sure if that was a, a timeout issue or if it was specifically that two five foxes were running and it needed to come back to me to go back to them. Let me try a specific flight search website. I'll check kayak.com. It's cool that it's looking at that. I would honestly say Skyscan is better, but let's see. So what it's doing is it's specifically jumping into Google and querying my prompt, which was, hey, I want to go to Launceston on this date and return on this date from Phuket. So again, it's not the fastest, but it's pretty amazing that I can sit here hands-free, I'm not touching anything. and But here it's come back with a, another response to me. So it wants to get really specific. After researching the flight routes, I can provide you with important information about traveling from Phuket to Launceston. This is a complex route that will require multiple connections. I did know that, that's why I asked. The most common route will be Phuket, Bangkok or Singapore, then to Melbourne and finally Launceston. Major airlines that can be used for different segments, for your specific dates. Okay, so I think it hasn't done a great job here, but I'll just go back and give it a suggestion. How about using Skyscanner? Because I know that you can book a flight directly from Phuket to Melbourne and then Melbourne to Launceston. You don't need to go to Bangkok or Singapore. And I know that because I have purchased the flights. So I've said, how about using Skyscanner and let's see what it comes back with. Yes, let's use Skyscanner to search for flights. I'll open Firefox and navigate to Skyscanner. Awesome. So what we'll do is we'll skip this run and see the response that we get back. Okay, and we've run into an error. Now, what I would assume originally would be my funds, my billing, the amount of money I've got on my account has run out, but that's not the case. I just checked that. So it's just run into an error. And I think because I've asked it to book a flight with multiple connections, it hasn't been able to do that. But that's not a problem. Let's look at some other scenarios or use cases. What about specifically asking it to use Google Sheets? Let's just quickly ask it to create a sheet. Um, create a Google Sheet. I think that's a Google Sheet, right? We'll have a look here. We've got Anthropic, Firefox, Images, PDFs with a big cross, calculator. Let's see, create a Google Sheet with simple client lead data. Let's see how it goes with this. I mean, it is pretty amazing. Yes, it's running into issues, but we are only in beta. And here we go, create a Google Sheet with simple client lead data. It's starting to run the agent. So let's see if it can actually do this. Now, how I think this would perform really well in your business processes was if you had data entry tasks. Think about when you've got teams that are taking documents or orders from Shopify and they need to actually input that data into spreadsheets. Yes, we can automate that, but we could also lean on AI to act as a virtual data assistant 
or data entry team member. I see we're getting redirected. Let me try a different approach. Tool, use Bash, of course. So it's going to actually need a Google account in order to create this. But I think I'm pretty happy with what I've seen. If you'd like to look at more use cases of how we can use the Anthropic Claude AI computer use, make sure to leave a comment below and we'll start looking at other ways that we can push the limitation. Currently, it does run into some issues and errors, but it's amazing to see that it can control my computer and do some basic tasks. If you need help automating parts of your business or need a solutions for your problems, don't hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com. Our team of experts are offering a free 30 minute consultation, so book yours today.